Hey everyone, it's Matt here and um, I'm just doing a very quick video um, to show some of the progress we've been making on OSSC Pro. Um, now this is going to be quite a rough and ready video because um, standard disclaimer for when I do videos I'm in no way or shape a video producer so this is basically just raw footage. Um, but anyway, it should give you an idea of, of some of the things we've been working on. Now, I know people keep saying, oh, when are you going to show more OSSC Pro? But the fact is, um, it's at a point now where the hardware is almost final. We still have to finalise case design, things like that. Um, the software is coming along, but still needs quite a bit of work. Um, at the moment, it can do pretty much everything OSSC Classic can do, but I mean, why would you pay for an upgrade that can only do that? You've already got OSSC Classic. So I just wanted to show quickly some of the features in the new scalar mode, which, um, well, is a full scalar, so you've got your full frame buffer, so you can do a lot more um, than you could do with a pure line doubler like OSSC Classic or anything like that. Um, now the menus are still a bit um, rough and ready. We've, we're still thinking about how to organize them properly. Um, but one new feature here is you can now do non-interlace restore for um, interlace sources. So what that means is if you have a badly converted title, um, I think some of the Capcom collections, where they were basically forced into 480i and they should have just output straight 240p, well, that will sort that out for you. Um, but we'll look mostly now at the options in the scalar mode. So I go to scalar options. Um, obviously, you've got your resolution there and you have a frame lock option on or off. Uh, hopefully it doesn't break the recording. Oh, that seems to have survived. Um, with the frame lock on, obviously you get uh, a nice smooth image with no tearing. With it off, you can get seamless transitions between 240p, 480i. Um, now, at the moment, when you switch it off, you can frame lock to 50 or 60 hertz. I have discussed with Marcus the possibility of um, a basically a 240p match option. So if you have... 59.84 for instance on I don't know like a, a Mega Drive or something in, in 240p which then goes up to like 59.81 or I'm just making these numbers up then it will match the frame rate to the 240p output so you get the very very absolute minimum um, duplicated or torn frames or anything like that because you basically um, although you're not frame locked, you are outputting at um, the same refresh rate. Um, now we've got aspect ratio controls. Obviously the finished one will have full zoom and pan, the kind of good stuff that you used to get on the old DVDO scalers. So that's pretty cool. Then you have an option of scaling modes now uh, this is something we hope that will expand in the future so you can do things like um, I don't know what they call it oh, I should have written a script like the retro tink does with the smoothing scale to X that's what I'm thinking of um, at the moment we've only got two option here nearest neighbor uh, I can't even pronounce that so I'm not going to try um, and of course the interlacing mode so we're on a PS2 game here and uh, I can put that to Bob, say, and you can instantly see the picture start to Bob, or at least I hope you can on the video that this comes out on. Now I'll just do a bit of panning around. Can I pan the camera on this game? Oh, yes, you can. I do love this game, but I haven't played it in forever. Um, so if I yeah, sort of move it around a bit, you should see the bobbing, and then. Uh, you can do weave as well if you really want to, and then that's back to motion adaptive. And hopefully, that will look a lot nicer. Um, don't take too much away from this, obviously, things are still being tweaked. Um, so, yeah, so that's pretty cool. But 
yeah, those are the main things I wanted to talk about. Was the fact that we do have the motion adaptive deinterlacer in now, although it's, it's still subject to being tweaked, and we do have the scaling options. Um, if you're familiar with OSSC Classic, you've probably seen these sampling modes before. Um, so we've got a few in there ready for Mega Drive, SNES, PlayStation, um, N64, etc. So that should avoid you having to manually dial in phase very often, if at all. And uh, same with um, the 480i sampler. You can force it into DTV or generic, whichever um, suits your needs. Um, so that's really all I wanted to, to talk about at the moment. Um, anything else I can show you? Not really. To say all oh, this is subject to change and we do hope to make the menus a bit more um, easy to navigate in the future. So that's where we are at the moment with OSSC Pro. Um, I appreciate it's been a bit slow coming along, but um, we are getting there and hope to have hardware out for people um, very soon. Well, I say very soon, nothing's happening very soon at the moment, but touch wood by the end of the year.